Hey guys, Angus here, personal trainer, metabolic coach, and today we're going to discuss something in the metabolism that I think a lot of people don't know, don't realize, and I think it's the most underrated thing that people don't know about in the metabolism, and it's high flux and low flux, and let's get into what it is. I'm going to use some cups here as an example, going from a small one, medium-sized cup, and a large cup. These cups are representing your metabolic rate. So I've discussed before my calorie deficit thing, so... This is your total daily energy expenditure. You're putting macronutrients in. Carbohydrates would act like, like water in here. Uh, fat would act like oil and float on top. And protein would act like stones. So it doesn't matter what we're putting in. Eventually this will go up and up and up and up and up. And eventually if this overspills, that goes into fat gain. So it's really easy to store fat. So you could only have this much fat, but you eat this much carbohydrates, it's gonna spill the fat over. If you eat no fat and just carbohydrates, any carbohydrates that spill over will convert into fat. You can even eat perfect amount of carbohydrates and a perfect amount of fat. But if the calories from protein go in, the, the level rises and overspills. And we also have calorie deficit where if we eat some protein, we eat some carbohydrates, and we eat some fat, and we leave a little gap, this gap needs to be made up by your energy stores. It could be made up by, by protein, it could be made up from protein converting into gluconeogenesis and, and filling the space up becoming carbohydrates. It could be stored carbohydrates in the form of glycogen, and it can also be stored body fat, which is what most of us want to do, and it's what the body would like to do if you're not metabolically broken. But let's discuss high flux, low flux. So high flux, low flux just refers to how much energy is going in and out of the system. And there's also what we have called an energy mismatch. If I'm within 10% over or 10% under, that would be an energy match. It would be close enough. Close enough is good enough. However, if I use a small cup, say my metabolic rate is very small, I don't have a lot of room, it's very easy to overspill. And again, if I have a really large cup, it might be really easy to create a giant deficit. The bigger the deficit, the numbers is the number. 3,500 calories in a pound of fat, whether you're this guy or this guy. And this is the, the thing that I think people don't understand is a lot of trainers are this person and they're training this person and they don't have an understanding of what it's like to be this person. So what's all this getting to? So I'm gonna get rid of this cup. It'll be this cup. We have metabolic seasons. So we know that athletes take off seasons. We know that trees, for instance, in the summer would be this person. They would have a high metabolic rate. They're taking in loads of sunshine from the sun and they're growing loads. So they're taking in loads of energy and they're burning loads. In the summer, trees are high flux. In the winter, trees are not taking in a lot of sunshine. They're not growing any, all their leaves have fallen off and they're low flux, but they're still energy matched. And this is the important thing, being energy matched. What dieters do is they eat like this person, they eat this much, and they move like this person. That's a complete and utter energy mismatch. And what happens eventually is they just burn out, they flake off, and it doesn't go really well. So I'll give you my example. In the summer, I'm this person. A lot of energy in, a lot of energy out, but as long as I create a gap, a calorie deficit, and this is the thing when people hear the word calorie deficit, they just think, I need to make the biggest deficit I possibly can because I need to lose the fat as quickly as possible, and that's just not how the metabolism works. It just won't allow you to do that. If you do that with this cup, you will end up with this cup and you will overspill. So my example is, I'm this person in the summer, I'm this person in the winter. So if I eat like this person, the same calories that will cause fat loss in the summer will cause gait, weight gain in the winter. And this is really important. So we need to transition between our different states. So what makes up our total daily energy expenditure? We've got our resting metabolic rate. That doesn't really change too much throughout the year. We've got our thermal effect of food. That's how much food we're eating and how much energy it costs to digest. And the, the biggest lever in this is our activity. And activity can be split into two parts. We've got our exercise activity. This is when we formally choose to do exercise. I recommend everyone do some zone two. I recommend everyone do some weightlifting. And then, you know, add in some hit on top of that if you have time. And then after that, the, the next biggest lever is actually uh, what's called NEAT, non-exercise activity thermogenesis. So you can have people who are what I would call a high flux person because they're fidgeting, they're moving a lot. Their resting metabolic rates here, their exercises here, 
but this big chunk is being made up of neat because they're so active all the time. All the time, they're just so active. And you've got people who are low flux people. They're not very active. What I would say, everyone wants to be this person or this person. It doesn't matter. What you have to do is match your appetite to which type you are. And you might be a different type depending on the season like I am. So the biggest lever is your, your neat. So why am I this in the winter and this in the summer? And it's basically just because in the summer, it's 10 o'clock at night. I'm out walking the dog. And now we're at half four and it's pitch black and it's been black for an hour outside. So I just don't feel like going out for a walk. So feelings and feelings are caused by hormones. So hormones cause a feeling, the feeling causes an action. So I can go fight against this and I could just go out for a run just now and go burn some calories if I want to. It will cost me more willpower. That's a choice and it depends what I want to do. But what I do rather is I'll use the summer for what the summer is good for and in the winter, I will just reduce my eating so I match this smaller cup. And then if I eat just a little bit under this, I can't expect a massive weight loss because this could only be 100 calories per day, but at least it's not weight gain. Where in here, when I'm this person, I can make a 500 calorie deficit and lose a pound a week. That's fantastic. Um, so it's about matching your expectations to which type you are. So this is high flux and low flux and matching the energy to the thing. If you eat like this person and you are burning like this person, you'll gain weight. And at the same time, if you eat like this person and move like this person, you will lose a tremendous amount of weight, but it's before long, you're gonna end up just wrecking your metabolism and it will just shrink, first of all, the amount of neat you do, and it might even shrink the amount of resting metabolic rate you do. So I hope that made sense. That's high flux and low flux. Hopefully that's explained a little bit. If you have any questions, drop them in the comments and I will speak to you guys later.